A new bill circulating through Congress is promising more pay and better benefits for wildland firefighters. Colorado Congressman Joe Neguse introduced Tim's Act. It's named after Tim Hart, a smoke jumper who lost his life in May while working in New Mexico. The bill would raise pay for federal wildland firefighters, make sure they are classified appropriately for the dangerous work they are doing, and provide more benefits. For more on this, I want to bring in Congressman Joe Neguse. He represents Colorado's 2nd Congressional District, which encompasses cities like Boulder and Fort Collins. Congressman Neguse, welcome. Why are these pay increases and benefits for firefighters such an important issue for you? Well, uh, first, thank you for having me on. Uh, there's no question that we are pushing our federal firefighting workforce to a breaking point, and that has to change. As you mentioned, I represent a district in north central Colorado. Uh, it is a district that's larger than the, the state of New Jersey geographically, and over 52% of it is federal public land. And last year, uh, as you might recall, we had a terrible wildfire season across the Rocky Mountain West, but in particular in Colorado, where in my district, two of the largest wildfires in our state's history, literally the largest and second largest ever in Colorado, both happened a year ago in my district, raging simultaneously, uh, putting at great risk many families, many homes, many businesses. And we relied on our firefighting workforce to protect us, federal wildland firefighters that ultimately sacrifice so much each and every day to protect our communities. The fact remains uh, that the federal firefighters who are working on these fires are woefully undercompensated. And I believe it's an injustice to think that we ask these individuals to risk life and limb to protect our communities and pay them $15 an hour to do so. Literally, some firefighters living in the dirt uh, as they fight these uh, these flames. Uh, myself and, and many of my colleagues believe uh, that that's just untenable. And so we've decided to do something about it by introducing Tim's Act. All right, I think a lot of people do find that hourly wage quite shocking considering the dangerous work that these uh, people do. So what real impact do you think passing this bill will have on these firefighters in practical terms? Well, it'll have a tremendous impact. Of course, uh, the first uh, and most important impact it will have is on these individual firefighters and, and their families, right? Ultimately ensuring that they can earn a living wage, that they have housing benefits, health benefits, mental health benefits. We know that the suicide rate uh, among uh, uh, federal wildland firefighters is higher uh, uh, and, and has growed, uh, growed rather in uh, recent years. Uh, so I, I think that that is very, very important and something that we're going to be able to, to make a tremendous impact on. In addition, I would also say that, as I'm sure you are aware, uh, we've had workforce challenges in terms of being able to recruit and retain uh, federal firefighters. It's a very you know, highly skilled profession and one in which, obviously, you know, their services are vitally necessary in the West and in Colorado and, and in many states across the Western United States. And so uh, to ultimately pursue a compensation package like the one we are trying to enact at the federal level, the new classifications that we're hoping to implement, we believe in turn will help us with respect to both recruitment and retention of federal wildland firefighters. And Congressman, you've also introduced other legislation, the Wildfire Recovery Act, which would bring in more resources to help communities rebuild after wildfires. Obviously, no one needs to tell you about the increasingly dangerous wildfire seasons we've seen out west, which you mentioned, due, of course, in large part to climate change. How urgent do you believe this issue to be? It's critical. Uh, it couldn't be more urgent. And as you said, there's no doubt that climate change is exacerbating, ultimately, the conditions that are leading to uh, more intense and more pervasive wildfires across the West. Uh, we don't really have wildfire seasons anymore in Colorado and in the Rocky Mountain West. We have wildfire years, literally uh, every month of the year in which a potential wildfire uh, can spark. And so from my perspective, and I think the perspective of many Westerners, it is important for us to get this right, to take it seriously, to invest in resiliency, in mitigation, in workforce, and ultimately in recovery, because we know that these wildfires are not going away anytime soon. Um, of course, it underscores the need for us to take significant action to curb emissions and, and ultimately act on climate, which is a, an important priority of mine and one that we're pursuing in the Congress right now. But there's a lot that we can do, I believe, on a bipartisan basis to ensure that our communities in the West are better protected from the threat of wildfires. And uh, that's precisely why we've introduced the legislation uh, that uh, that we're discussing today. And Congressman, I want to 
pivot now to ask you about the larger Biden agenda. Where do we now stand on the Build Back Better plan, the president's social spending bill, and the bipartisan infrastructure bill? When could we see a vote? Uh, well, it's a great question. I don't know that I could give you a precise date um, or time. Suffice to say that we are having some robust conversations within the House Democratic Caucus and with our colleagues in the Senate. I've spent a great deal of time talking with colleagues from across the ideological spectrum within the House Democratic Caucus and I uh, have spent some time with uh, several different senators as well uh, discussing the nuances of uh, the two proposals, the core pillars of the president's agenda, the Build Back Better bill, and of course the bipartisan infrastructure deal, both of which will inure to the benefit of the American people and are transformational really in terms of uh, the ways in which American families will benefit once those two bills are signed into law. We are doing everything we can to get them across the finish line. And uh, as you know, we're a big tent party with a lot of diverse views uh, as to the best way to solve some of these consequential challenges. But I'm confident that we'll get there. I'm hopeful uh, that we'll get there this week. And that's certainly where we're driving towards. But uh, mm -hmm. time will tell. Speaking of those diverse views and the big tent party yesterday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she was adding the paid leave back into the Build Back Better plan. Um, why is this happening now when Senator Manchin is still saying he is unwilling to pass the bill unless it's cut down? Well, I can't speak to the timing, and, and I, I would defer to the Speaker and to Senator Manchin with respect to uh, the issue that you've referenced. I would just simply say that paid family leave is an incredibly important provision uh, that we ought to make the law of the land. We are the only Western uh, democracy that does not have paid family leave at the federal level. Uh, it is uh, just unacceptable in my view. I, uh, like many Americans, am a parent. My wife and I have a three-year-old daughter. And I think about the hundreds of thousands of parents out there who are unable to take maternity leave or maternity leave ultimately paid uh, under current law if they are not you know, fortunate enough to live in a state that provides that benefit under state law. So I think that this is a giant step forward for American families. It's something mm -hmm. that we should have done a long time ago. And I'm hopeful that we can get it done in this instance. But obviously, with respect to uh, where we go from here and, and the speaker's decision making, uh, that, that I would defer to her on that point. But Congressman Nagus, you're good to go with both of these bills. You could vote and you're fine with them as is? Yes, I think both bills, as I said, are transformational. I mean, I, you know, just taking a step back and thinking about the impact that these bills would have on Americans across our country. The bipartisan infrastructure deal is the first bipartisan infrastructure uh, piece of legislation that is poised to pass both chambers of the Congress in the modern history of our country, rebuilding bridges and crumbling roads across our country, including many areas of my state. The Build Back Better bill, as we've talked about, paid family leave, universal pre-K, so that every three-year-old can go to preschool like my daughter is today. Uh, child care benefits, expanding health care access, and so much more, reducing the cost of prescription drugs. Uh, there, there's a lot uh, that these bills will do to help American families uh, as we work to lower costs and, and try to create more jobs. And so I'm committed to getting both of these bills across the finish line, and we'll be proud to vote yes on both. All right, Congressman Joe Nagoose, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you.